Welcome in to another King Central. I'm sitting here today with Malik Monk. And before we just start talking basketball, let's talk about your other passion. Let's talk about <laughs> some fashion, Malik. For sure, for sure. Let, let's start with this. What makes a good outfit? Hmm, that's a good question. Hey. Something gotta stand out. Something gotta be bright. Uh -oh. whether, whether it's your pants. Um, I'm wearing black. Your shirt. And jeans. But your watch stand out. Hey. Okay. Something. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just gotta have shirt, necklace, pants, shoes, socks, anything. Some standoffish, then you just layer it from there. Well, that's how I do it. Okay. Yeah. What, does it does it help express yourself, your personality? What is it? The mood of the day. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, the mood of the day for sure. Um, sometimes I start with my shoes. Okay. Sometimes I start with my pants. Sometimes I start with my shirt. But I just fit everything around it. So you're in a good mood today because your shoes are. Yeah, these amazing. are little. I had all gray on, um, and we had practice too, so <laughs> yeah. these are super comfy. So yeah, uh, they, they bring joy. They yeah, bring definitely. joy. So how has your fashion evolved since you've been in the NBA? Um, I just got exposed to way more pieces, uh -huh. um, way more exposure. So I was able to buy a little bit more things, um, make a little bit more money too. So. <laughs> Buy a little bit more stuff there, um, but I always kind of like had a hand for it or an eye for it because my mom dresses pretty nice. So, really? Yeah. What would you say she? Could you describe her style? Unorthodox. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And you, I feel like sometimes with your style, like it can be everywhere. Mm -hmm. And when and you smile when I say <laughs> that because I I think. When I look at it, I think of you just like totally expressing your personality. So like when you are coming in pregame, do you have like a favorite type of pregame outfit, a game day outfit? I don't actually. Oh. Um, it just goes on the weather. Um, and like I said before, how I'm feeling. <laughs> uh, if it's gray outside, I might wear a dark clothes. Okay. If it's a little sunny, I might throw some color in there. I want to talk a little bit more about your collaboration with Warren Lotus. Yeah, for uh, sure. How did that come about? Um, we had mutual friends um, from when I was in Kentucky. Um, one of my friends put me in touch with Warren Lotus, and not Warren's, his name is Stowe. Um, but then Stowe put me in touch with Warren Lotus. and. Um, We've just been going since then, and that was three, four years yeah. ago. Yeah, and um, it's just love. What goes into like a collaboration? Like, is it? I mean, are you just using your voice? Are you just using your your the creative side of your brain? Like, um, this is coming from someone who only knows basketball. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's really a collab comes from the people. Um, if you're close with them. Yeah. Yeah, if we got a, a relationship, personal relationship, then collabs just happen. I just think it's so cool that you're able to not only do what you love mm -hmm. on the basketball floor, but then you're able to really express yourself differently with this with other clothes. passion. Yeah, for sure. Now, when you look at your teammates, could you tell me one person that has the best style besides you? It depends, because Domas dress European, very European. <laughs> yeah. And, he, and he, he can dress too. Okay. Um, Keon dresses, Keon dresses like, a little bit like me, I'll say. Okay. Um, Fox is more European dresses too. He dressed a little bit more European um, because he don't do the flashy stuff, the crazy things. He just throw on the top shirt and then I'll be playing, um, match it. But it, it's just- Is uh, that boring to you? No. Okay. Cause I do that sometimes too. Yeah, yeah, um, But that's just their style. They don't they do not do all the flashy stuff. Yeah. But, uh, they, they lead that to me. When you when you're on like league fits and you, you see yourself and people are posting about you and your outfits, does that make you feel validated or anything, or is it just more like, oh cool, like it's getting noticed? It, it add it adds a little bit more to it, but I don't care what nobody thinks. I'm gonna like what I put on. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I'm gonna like what I put on no matter what. So um, yeah, it just adds a little bit more. Like oh okay. I guess this is yeah. going somewhere. If you could give one teammate a wardrobe makeover, who would it be? Keegan. Ah! <laughs> okay, wait, let me guess. If you had one, I'm gonna guess this word, I'm gonna have it in my head, and then you tell me. If you have one word to describe his style, what would it be? Lame. Oh, I was gonna say boring. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and not to say I feel that way, I was just going off of what Malik was probably well, I, That's say. how I feel. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> what, what would you do, give him a color, like spice it up, tell him No, just, just 
throw some jeans in there, a little sweater every now and then, not the king stuff all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's probably free for him, so he's like. He got a lot of money. Yeah, no, that's true. Good point. Like, <laughs> hey. He can, he can buy a little bit. Come on, kid. You Just got Just a it. little bit. Yeah, I like it. Well, let's talk a little bit more about basketball and mm -hmm. what's happening on the floor. Um, you bring us, and when I say us, the fans, people that watch you guys play all the time, so much joy with the way that you play. Mm -hmm. Are you playing, like, are you having as much fun as it looks like you're Oh yeah, definitely. Every time I step on the court, um, my whole mood changes. Oh. Whether I'm mad, off the court or anything. As soon as I step on, I just, uh, 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 the flip switch, uh, the switch flips. Yeah. Then um, I'm just in character mode, I guess. That, I mean, that's truly what it feels like. Your joy, your aura is always felt. And I mean, especially when you go up for some of these dunks. The, you've had some incredible ones this year. Do you have yeah, a favorite? I have some nice ones. I have some nice ones. Um, <laughs> I have some nice ones. What would be my favorite? Probably the first game of the season in, in Utah. On Chris Dunn. Yeah, in yeah. Utah. Yeah. Okay. Time. That's one of my favorites, <laughs> yeah, for if sure. you can't tell. No, yeah. It definitely was, especially the first game of the season. I mean, start off with a bang. And that was from De'Aaron, right? Yep. yep. Oh. De'Aaron Fox with the steal. Swiper the other way. Dive. Oh! He brought the house down. Look at this jazz crowd. They don't believe it. That is showtime. Oh, my God. Going in that direction then, the Kentucky connection. I mean, we talk about this all the time, mm -hmm. but it's so cool to think about you guys just playing together all of your life. And now as adults playing as professionals on the same team, I mean, is what, when you have that type of chemistry, does it just take you to another level? Yeah, it's just, it's just easier to go out there and play. Um, Cause you know, I know what Foss gonna do. He know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. I know where he gonna be at. Uh, he knows where I'm gonna be at then everybody else just, I think, follows around us. Um, because our chemistry is so strong, um, he says anything He says anything to me, I say anything mm -hmm. to him. So I think that's why everybody could say whatever um, in the locker room and we all just comfortable with each other. That comfort level, I mean, that has to be another thing that can help take you guys to oh, a yeah, whole other level. Definitely, because you can call somebody out without them taking it um, to heart or taking it personal. So. That, that, that goes a long way, like you said. Accountability. Yeah, for sure. I mean, whether you're telling someone that they dress lame or telling them to pick Get it back up on, on defense. The, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Either way, no matter Same what, thing. hold them accountable. Yeah. I'm seeing from Rudy Gobert here in the third. You know what? I, I absolutely love the fact that, you know, you're kind of bumping, bumping jaws a little bit. It's physical out there, but Malik is not the guy right. that you want to get into it with because he's going to channel that into buckets. And here he is with the pick. Money. Malik Monk, yes, sir. Nas Reed coughs it up. Keon Ellis. That's a career high four steals and the hoop. The magic here in the Prince City. Malik pulls it, got it! Money Malik Monk staying on one, standing on business in Minnesota. Herter with a big rebound, finds Malik. Bang! Got it! Malik left wide open, cash, money Malik. Malik, back to back jacks. Yahtzee, got him! I'm sure growing up, there had to be someone that inspired you to play basketball? Ooh, that's a good question. Or maybe a few people? A few people. Um, my brother, for one. Uh, always, I still look up to him today. Um, mm -hmm. Then Monte Ellis. Yeah, I like Monte Ellis yeah. a lot. Um, Baron Davis. Wow, yeah. what was it about Baron? Um, just, he's just like a shifty guard that got bounced. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Russ Brook, for sure, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but like when I was six, seven, eight, Monte Ellis was, was yeah, Monte Ellis. What was sure. it about his game? How exciting he is. He go out there and just, 
I think I do some of the same things. So, yes. Yeah, he can dribble, shoot, um, fearless. Were you in a, Were you in an era where you were like watching his highlights and trying to copy some of the stuff? Yeah. Or? So my era was YouTube and and um, Instagram. Yes. So, so okay. Instagram first came out when I was in seventh grade. Okay. Yeah. So I was I was big on the on the uh, highlights for sure. Did you ever put your own highlights up? My brother did. I did. He put your highlights up for yeah, you. Yeah. That's so cool. So he always was celebrating. Nah, he, he was. He's 12 years older than me. So wow. um, he actually quit playing basketball um, in Germany to come back and make sure I, I had my head on straight. So yeah. I mean, what did what did that take as a brother? Like just a lot of communication, a lot of love. What was uh, it? I really didn't want to hear it at first because I didn't know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. um, because it's my brother, of course. Um, but. Each, each year, something he told me back then happens now still. So he, uh, it's just. Really? Yeah, that's why I look up to him so much. Family's so great. Yeah, it is. I love that. For sure. He, he had your mom's style, your brother always helping you mm -hmm. out. I, I, that's great to have around. Um, so talking about some of these other players around the league, former players, you know, I'm sure you hear this a lot. You're one of the best six men. I in gotta this win league. it. I gotta win it. Yeah, I mean, one. You hear? What are we doing? I gotta win. What it. are we doing? Thank you. Yeah. Tell, you tell him. <laughs> for sure. I gotta win. It. So is that an award you strive for? Last year, I wasn't really going for it, but the fans was behind me, mm -hmm. and I felt like I should have won it. But this year, yeah, that's that's what I'm shooting for now. Thousand percent. So I love that you. This is what I also love about you. You're just, you're so honest about it because I think some people would be afraid to be like, cause it's an individual award. And it's like, no, no, because if I'm doing better within that category, sure. then my team is doing better. Thousand percent. Okay. Yeah, and thousand that's percent. what we feel about you. And not only do yeah, you deserve it. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest for sure. But that's, <laughs> again, another thing we love <laughs> about you. So you think about some of the great six men uh, Bobby Jackson, Lou Jack. Williams, Jack. Jamal Williams, Crawford. Jamal Crawford, for sure. I look up to those guys, too. So, does it take a different type of mindset to be a six man, to yeah, be in does. that role? it does. I think the six man is the anchor of the team. Um, and with me, it's just not scoring. I create for others. Um, I try to make others laugh um, and just, just have everybody together because we can't do this without each other. Yeah. In it's another thing that's absolutely noticed about you. It's, I mean, your playmaking ability and getting everyone involved, but I think you go back to with how you carry yourself on the floor. Like, that carries into other teammates, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mike, Mike tells me that all the time. Don't change how I act um, because it's, it just anchors us. It anchors us. So um, that's why I always try to just go out there, be honest, be me, um, smile no matter what, what's happening. And um, it's been working out for me, so I'm going to continue. Oh, it's been working out. <laughs> Does someone else empower you to always just be yourself on this team? My mom. Yeah? Yeah, she takes me every day. Keep smiling, don't change, for sure. Going back to your playmaking ability, I feel like it has taken another leap. What about it has have you elevated? Like, Is it just the way that you um, make a pocket pass or is it the way that you maybe don't leave your feet? What is it? Um, more opportunity. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I've been... Um, so I, I played point guard my whole life. Yeah. Um, until I went to Kentucky and Fox came and I had to move off guard. Uh, thank you, Fox. Good job. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I was always used to having the ball, making plays and stuff like that. But when I got to the league, I went all the way away from it and never had a chance to get back, get it back until I came here and Mike uh, let me be free. How important is that freedom as a player? It feels like a lot of you guys play pretty freely, yeah, we even do. even though he talks about some players having more freedom than others. Yeah, definitely, of course. I mean, that's that's basketball and the work environment. Um, somebody's always higher than somebody, but we all don't go back to one goal. Um, but yeah, having freedom, I think that's the biggest thing in the NBA for a player to to thrive, um, being comfortable. Because if you're free, you're comfortable. Mm. You know you can make a mistake yep. and, and not look off your shoulder and come out the game. So that's that's the biggest thing with, with players coming into the league. Um, when people say they bust or this or this, they just haven't had the opportunity as some guys have. So I'm getting the opportunity now. <laughs> you, you absolutely are. Yeah. Defensively as well, it seems like you've been more locked in. Your teammates have been locked in. I know there's still the lulls. There's yeah. the ups and downs. Sure. That's going to happen. Sure. But what what has been 
the shift in the mindset there for you guys? You just said it. Oh. That's all it was. A okay. shift. A shift in the mindset. Um, and a one two. Defense is just it's, it's willpower and um, one two and effort. It's not just oh do this, do this, do this. It's if you want to do it. We in the NBA, we the best, so we can do it. Of course, so it's just if we want to. What is that? Does that take like work off the court, or is it just really? I mean, that mental shift, or does it is mental? Okay, mental. Nothing off the court. Um, besides film, you can watch film and and, and get better and sure. try to know other plays and beat them to their plays, but it's all willpower and mental. Is it cool just having a team that you just all like each other though for like some of the, or I mean, obviously everyone has different personalities no, like in every sure. workspace, we definitely but like each other. it's fun. Um, it's, it's comfortable. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good to come to work and not, oh, I say this, he might go say this to somebody, he might go say it, and now we don't like each other, but you can say whatever to anybody in our locker room and We'll laugh about it. What does success look like to you for the rest of the season? Continue to do what I do. Mm. Whether it's averaging 15, um, or maybe it shoots up a little bit more. Um, or it might shoot down and my rebounds and assists go up. Um, but as long as the team is winning and, and, and I can just be out there on the court, I think we have a, a great chance of doing something special. Monk with the steal and the launch. Let's talk a little bit more about Keegan Murray. Keegan. Yeah, you know, some lame outfits, but love what he's been able to produce on the floor, especially Definitely. sophomore year. What what makes him a special young guy? He listens. Oh. Yeah, whether, whether he's talking or not, he listen, he's listening to you. Um, and he wants to learn too. So that's, that's always good um, from a guy coming in because when I came in, I didn't want to hear anything from nobody. Really? Yeah, I didn't want to hear anything. Um, I was... A lottery pick, I, th I thought I should be playing. But no, he, he listens um, and he buys into his role. Um, he don't complain about anything. Um, and yeah, like I said, he just want to get better. I, lo I love Key and he's opening it up a little bit more um, around us, um, coming out of the shell, so that's good to see. I mean, that goes to what you guys have been able to do. It seems like you guys have kind of helped bring him out of that shell. Mm -hmm, definitely, I, I think me and Fox, uh, him being with Fox this summer um, and me just being me around him opened it up a little bit more for him. Um, but yeah, he gonna continue to get better for us. Domas Sabonis, now snubbed. All-star for sure. I mean, how many times are we gonna have to talk about this? All-star for right? sure, yeah. And maybe, and maybe that is how we talk about this in this season for him for the rest of his career, right? Mm -hmm. Just the snubbed all-star year for him. Historic year, the triple doubles, incredible. What is it about him that stands out to you? Um, he's relentless. Winner, will do anything to win. Um, and yeah, like I said, he's just relentless. We we follow behind him. Um, he go out there, he get hit every day. Yes. He hit in the face all the time, don't get foul calls. And he don't come to the bench complaining to us, like, yo, they're fouling me, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna stop going to the rim. He, he goes even more. Um, and, and that's just him being a leader. Um, and we follow right behind him with everything he does. So I was gonna say, what does that do for you guys? Just him not complaining because that's that's hard to do. Not hard to do, especially to when hit. you're yeah. It hurts. Uh, <laughs> and for him to keep going and going and going and going, we we just follow his lead. Let's talk a little bit more about the two man game, especially with you. How I mean, you have been doing things in that two man game that have just been out of this world at times, right? Uh, the connection doesn't matter who it is with. If mm -hmm. you're throwing lobs to JaVale McGee, if it's um, with Sabonis, if it's with De'Aaron Fox cutting back door, what is it? Your vision, your passing, what is it that makes it so special? Having a dual threat in Domas um, where you can throw it in the pocket and he can shoot a floater or he can throw it in the pocket and he go create for himself. Then with JaVale, having somebody that can just catch the ball wherever you throw it. Um, I had the luxury of playing with AD for one year, and he was a little bit of both. So I kind of got used to it then. Um, and then I came here, and it just expanded way more. Um, 
And we got shooters out there surrounding me, um, so it give me a little bit more space to do stuff. But yeah, it's just me, like I said, having the ball in my hands before, um, just being a point guard and, and just knowing how to have, have the ball, knowing how to make plays. Um, I think that molded me um, into being what I am here in SAC. Favorite screen, is it from Domas Sabonis? Alex Lynn. Really? Yeah. Okay, he's more of a brick wall than Sabonis? Screening, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, what what is it? Is it the timing of it? He um, isn't worried about getting the ball in the pocket. Okay. So he, yes. he, he just want to create for, for me. So yeah, that's that's why I love Aileen too. He just set the screen and he tell me to shoot it. He'll get the rebound if I miss. Mike Brown, I love Mike the way Breezy. that he talks <laughs> to media. He breaks down the game for all of us. He, you could tell he loves the game. Yeah, he does. Does that show in practice? He wants to win, very bad, very bad. Um, and I think I thank Mike for that because if I ain't come here, I don't think I'd be. Um, in the same mindset as I am right now, um, as winning. How did he do that? He just changed everything. He came in here and changed the whole, our whole mindset. Not even, I mean, Sacramento mindset, of course, but mine, um, just the outlook of basketball. Um, seeing five, six plays ahead, um, seeing one play can affect three plays ahead. Just him being a great mind, a uh, great basketball mind, um, and, and, and knowing the game a lot. That's special. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's like you said, like, I, I know it's again, fun for all of us. Like when he breaks down the game for us or wants to explain something right. So we're explaining it right to everyone mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure even to you guys at times, it just ultimately teaches you something else that maybe you didn't even know playing basketball. Yeah, exactly, life. exactly. Uh, he teaches us a lot of stuff um, that goes to the basketball court and with life too. So kudos to Mike. Let's get to the beam. I've talked to so many guys about this beam, how great it is, how it's formed its own identity in this city. What is what is the what does the beam mean to you? Sacramento. Oh. Yeah, Sacramento. Perp. Um, there's a lot of love out here. I love the beam actually. Uh, I take my little selfies out there every 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 time we win. Really? Yeah, I got beam selfies <laughs> through my sunroof. Yes. Uh, no, nah, I think it just brings another another uh, uh, extra boost of winning mm -hmm. um, because it's, you get to look forward to something. Yeah, and <laughs> now you can see it from everywhere, from, from everywhere. space. Yeah, you can see it from everywhere. <laughs> see it flying in. Yes. Yeah, you can see it from everywhere. It's fire. Uh, how, how have you enjoyed uh, Sacramento and these fans over these Oh, I loved it. They, they, they embraced me with tremendous love, um, and I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Everywhere I go, uh, I get applaud, yeah. thank me. Um, they don't bulldoze me for pictures. Um, some come up, ask autographs. Oh, I'm sorry, am I bothering you? Nah, you're not. Um, so it's a lot of love out here. Does it make you feel like, wow, what I'm, I'm doing is right? Yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely made me feel like what I'm doing is, is the right thing. For the future generation of kids, what would be one thing that you, or that are trying to be basketball players, what would be one thing that you'd want to tell them? You can do it. Mm. You can do anything. You can do it. For sure. The confidence. If you're gonna do one thing in life, have the confidence that Malik Monk has. I'm telling you, <laughs> you're gonna get further in life. <laughs> it's the, oh, and make sure to wear a pop of color or a big piece of jewelry, Yeah, okay? wear, wear, wear something, something nice so somebody can see it. <laughs>